welcome to Littleton Common and fall. Well, all the holidays are coming fast. Fall sports are in high gear and our Littleton teams are doing well. We hope you enjoyed our interview with the new head football coach, Asante Easter, on last month's show. Yes, and it's time to let the games begin for the holidays. <laughs> right now, I'm getting my Halloween decorations from storage and dressing up the yard. Love doing that for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Nice. The friends of the COA are looking forward to this year and continuing to make sure that the seniors have a good winter by donating to TREAD and other outreach services. We welcome your donations and those from any businesses that want to help. The new uh, Friends Little, of Littleton Council on Aging President Holly Stewart and board member Joe Barry were welcome to a Rotary meeting and were able to discuss future ways to work together. We look forward to any help we receive. It's always a pleasure to help our seniors any way we can. And speaking of Rotary, the Littleton Rotary Club recently honored a longtime Littleton resident, Millie McGovern. In case you missed it, here are the highlights of that event. Um, today is a special day for us because, um, as you can see, we have a lot of guests and we have a very special guest of honor. And our guest of honor is Millie McGovern, who is celebrating her 94th birthday today. Everybody wish Millie a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Millie. Happy birthday to you. And Millie, you still hold the title for the best singer in the whole group. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, Millie. I couldn't hear a word you said. <laughs> oh boy. We also you have You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> Cutting the cake. Let's get around it. Uh, <laughs> I've worked with Millie for many years. Happy birthday, Millie. Yes. Oh, hey, Pat O'Donoghue, also from Littleton PD. Hi, One of my favorite people right here. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. 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 So I'm team with the idea, do I want to come to Rotary? Do I want to, I've got to do traffic. Maybe I'll just go down to the craft and get an A. I got halfway up here. I almost turned around. Why? Because I decided I didn't want to come. I was going to be 94. I told you to be here today. Be quiet. I'll be quiet. And uh, I, I came that close. You have no idea. I could not believe it. And thank you all so very, very much. I can't believe it. And I am 94 today, I know. You look I'll like keep a 34. It. I'll keep it. And thank you, thank you to everybody, but holy cats. I hope you all make 94, okay? And be as happy as I am. How's that? Good. Happy birthday, Millie. And happy birthday, yes. We have been waiting a long time, but it looks like we are getting closer to a senior center and new programs to enjoy. We will be watching for the big day. The friends are also hoping a new thrift shop will be opening soon. Stay tuned for that date. Speaking of staying tuned, I hope you're a regular watcher of LCTV. We cover 11 different boards and committees each month, so there's no excuse for you not knowing what's going on in town. You can watch most meetings live on LCTV or binge watch the meetings at your leisure on LCTV On Demand, which you can link to from the town website, www.littletonma.org. Or if YouTube is more your thing, 
type in Littleton Community Television in the search bar and you'll be brought to our YouTube page and you can watch all the great local programs from there. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notifications icon and you will receive a notice every time a new show is uploaded to our page. I'm happy to report that last month, Barbara, we passed the 700 subscribers mark to our channel. Wonderful. Yeah. That's, so That's kind of exciting. It is, considering the population of Littleton is 10,000, <laughs> you know, registered voters. Um, that's pretty cool. I think so. Yeah. Today we are visiting with Madhavi Oliver, our newest shop owner here in Littleton. Madhavi has transformed the Reed Wood House on 20 Meeting House Road into a place of colorful scarves. Oh my, mm. my thing. <laughs> Madhavi travels to India and handpicks gorgeous fabrics to design her May Mayo scarves. The shop's name Mayo means peacock in Tamil hmm. and is often spoken in southern India. This is one of the oldest surviving classical languages. Like feathers of a peacock, Mayel scarves are a kaleidoscope of colors. Let's go meet Madhavi. Got to go back. Okay, awesome, you. awesome. Thank you for coming to the open house. That was really fun. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, I would like you to show me around. Okay, sure, sure. So, um, as you recall, I told you that this is a 1780 historic home. It's on the National Registry of Historic Homes. And I recently purchased it and I wanted to set it up as a shop for myself, my products, as well as to share it with folks in Littleton, small artisans, people who run small businesses to come and Very share good. the space. Um, I did see that there were some people here selling their mm -hmm. wares yeah. um, and, you know, had some really nice things. Yes. And, uh, and I know you do too. Thank you, thank you. But yeah. um, at any rate, oh. This is a be you have beautiful room. Thank you. By Thank you. Way. And I do know that your theme is peacocks, right? Yeah, and yeah. So my small business, I make scarves from uh, fabrics in India. And uh, peacock, my, my brand is called Mail. Mail means peacock in my language. I speak Tamil, which is one of the oldest languages uh, still spoken in the world today. I wondered about the sign outside yeah. because I thought, I wonder if it's someone's name or mm -hmm. why you chose yeah, that. Yeah. So now I know it's because of peacocks. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. good. And uh, it is a national bird in India as well and it is there in a lot of our mythological stories and uh, mm -hmm. beautiful bird. Yes, and, uh, for sure. Yeah. And your outfit there yeah. is, um, you know, oh, peacock so, yeah. inspired, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so this is a poncho. Uh, I make a lot of my uh, products from Indian saris. Saris is what we wear in India. Yes. Uh, all the time, my mom, grandmother, everybody used to wear a sari every day. It'll be like a cotton one for everyday use, a fancy silk one, which we can showcase later for weddings and stuff. Oh. And so I buy new saris and I cut them up into smaller sizes to make scarves. I employ four women in India, so I help them as well on a living and I'm happy to share the colors and the fabrics of India to everybody here. In Very good. Yeah. Yes. And so you design your own fabrics? Uh, I really don't design the fabric because there's like already designed hundreds okay. of fabrics and uh, I just pick and choose things which work well for our living here. Mm -hmm. uh, smaller size scarves to kind of wear on the neck, pop of color, uh, larger ones for winter. 
and then summertime nobody wants to wear a scarf but I have other products like the, this yeah. is like a beach cover up as well oh yeah yeah I, I think it would look great just wearing it yeah anytime. yeah yeah yes so um yeah uh, what is your dream actually yeah so um, I always wanted to have a shop and I feel other people, maybe in Littleton, local artists, would also like to have a shop. Um, and when in the past I would be a vendor in a lot of fairs, it was really, really fun. And I feel those vendors in the winter time may, would like to be inside and showcase their art as well. So I kept uh, this room for that purpose. There's some more extra space if needed. Uh, I'm willing to share the space a lot with everybody in Littleton. And um, the, it is different from a co-op. It's not like a co-op. In a co-op, it's everybody is permanently selling, and then there's somebody managing it. Uh, this is more like pop-up concept, where you pop up for the day, oh. or you pop up for two days. You pop up with a bunch of like-minded, similar art people. For example, I would try to have a cheese market. Uh, I know there's somebody who sells cheese in Littleton. I would reach out to them and have a once a month cheese market. Mm -hmm. And along with that, maybe I would invite people who make sauces or olive oils and uh, home, you know, what they do as their passion. I would bring them together here and I feel that would be a nice way of sharing the space as well as. Um, well, it's, it's bringing community together. And it's kind of like what you were talking about where you used to go out yeah. to do this. And so they have a place. So what is the limit that they can, I imagine they're renting mm -hmm. space. Yeah, they would rent a space. And yeah. how, what's the limit for staying or coming? Because can you um, come back it's, other I'm times? A learn, it's a learning experience, right? And I don't know what the town people need or what uh, vendors would need. Uh, I'm going to start off with, hey, rent it for a day, um, and then or if you want to rent it two, three days, so you get enough publicity for people to come in, I'd be happy to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let it uh, run by itself and evolve as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's not all about making the money. I did put a lot of money into this building. I can imagine. Um, I had to redo the walls, uh, fireproof them to 45 minute fire rating and uh, redo the plumbing so uh, but then I made a beautiful place I'm very happy about it I'm happy to be in my shop and share the space with everybody else. can we take a little tour yeah sure yeah so welcome to my new shop so before I start start showing the shop I want to give a shout out to my builder uh, Brian Lurvy he grew up in Littleton I think Lurvy family lives here as well now. Oh. Uh, he lives on Snow Drive and he did a fantastic job helping me with everything. And uh, Tim, the a person who did a lot of the woodwork as well. Oh. I would like to shout out to them. You know, I like that you've left some of the building yeah, as it was. Yeah. So yeah, originally, actually. Yeah, true. So the, there was a big chimney here. This was the kitchen of the building. Uh, and there was like a small eaten area. Uh, the, the room we just came out of was the dining room and there was a living room on the other side, two bedrooms upstairs. So there was like a wood stove, an old chimney, uh, which would have been nice to leave as is, but then I felt I needed the space for my shop. So I saved the brick and we put it here, we used the old wood here. Nice. All the beams are from the house. Old wood from the I house. like the mirror over there anyway. <laughs> So I'll explain to you a little bit about the mirror concept. When we shop in India, uh, my, my great-grandfather used to have a sari shop mm. in India, which I didn't know that time, but now I have learned about it. But when we shop in India, the saris are stacked up in, uh, in cupboards like that. And there is a mirror and there's a table or like a desk. And the person, there are salespeople standing behind you and they take off the sari oh. and then they drape it on you and then you have a mirror to look to see if you like it and yeah. you purchase it. Yeah, and you were talking something about maybe people could come in and have a sari. Yes, like yes. A, uh, party or something. <laughs> sari, sari night. 
Well, I am hoping to, to showcase the culture, traditions of India as well. Over here, my friend Arpita, who runs Gurukul, is also going to be doing stuff in this building. Um, I, for example, I would do a sari night where if you had a sari, somebody gifted to you and you want to wear it, wear it drape it, uh, you'd come over with your sari. And if you didn't have a sari, you'd take one from my collection. And uh, it'd just be a nice uh, ladies' night. Mm. Uh, if the men want to do a different type of night with the, with the other Indian uh, outfits men wear, which is also a long piece of cloth which they just drape around. That's so interesting. Yeah. We would do that too. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, <clears throat> I'm a scarf person. I have many. You are, you are wearing a beautiful scarf as well. <laughs> and I don't think you could ever have enough. To scarves, yes, and you have a, a different uh, type than I have, mm -hmm. you know, in colors and stuff. Yeah. So I know I'm going to have to come shopping. Yes. Yeah. But let me show you my what I designed and came up with the concept. I I try to be sustainable in all practices. So I have this scarf, which uh, is my I call it Mayil uh, 1663. Uh, just because I want to throw in some numbers, but it is 16 inches uh, wide, wow. uh, 63 inches long. It's very lightweight, as you can see, and yeah. kind of fun. And then it comes with its own little travel pouch. I like that. So, but um, this is uh, such a pretty yeah, design it? and yeah. a scarf color. So the fun part is shopping, right? I shop for these fabrics. I go meet the weavers and. I learn, every time I go, I learn a little bit more about my cultural heritage. Uh, different parts of my country have different type of oh. uh, fabrics. Yeah. And for example, this one is from uh, Orissa where they make uh, ikats. You may have heard about ikats, but in two different states, the diff ikat pattern is very different. Uh, in ikat, what they do is they dye the thread, tie and dye the thread before they weave. Hmm. So it's always fuzzy. But it is double-sided as a fabric, so so I learned all that as part of my exploration of heritage textiles, and I hope to share that as well wow. in the space here. Well, I like the whole thing. This would be uh, my scarf cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs a scarf cabinet, oh, I think. Um, so. I also have uh, antiques which I have collected during my travels and I would showcase them and uh, if people want to do some interior decoration with Indian fabrics and uh, antiques, I'd be happy to help them as well. Well, um, I see that you have elephants up there and you should have the trunk up, right? Uh, yes, the trunk up is lucky. Basically, it's lifting the trunk up to bless you, Oh, right? So uh, when or in every uh, Hindu temple, uh, while growing up, there will be an elephant, which is the elephant of the temple. And um, we will go running happily, give it some peanuts and get blessings from the elephant. And oh. uh, it's still is going on now. Yeah. Yeah. So elephants are lucky. Well, we have a lot of things we say lucky, but elephant is definitely one of them. <laughs> the banana plant, my friend gave me that. Um, it's auspicious in India to have a banana plant oh. in all weddings. So she gifted me a banana plant. Nice. Um, it, uh, I think she took better care of it than I did, but it'll get, it'll get better. And you can chop off the banana plant and it comes back. Okay. So I guess it's not used to winter. <laughs> How sad. Well, you never know. He'll, it'll adjust. Yeah. Because I have a southern magnolia in mm -hmm. my yard. And yeah. Had it 30 years. Wow. Yeah. But he hasn't flowered. Oh, my magnolia flowers a lot. Oh. Um, I, I don't know if it's a dogwood or magnolia. Is there a difference? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I have lived more than half my life in Littleton. I love Littleton. And I've been part of the parade committee, the 300 year celebration that was in the oh. parade committee. And we did an Indian float. I don't know if people remember the Indian float with a lot of dancers and oh. color. And yeah. yeah, I've been on the sustainability committee. I hope to be very sustainable in my business as much as I can. 
Nice. I hope so too. Yeah. So this is an antique tapestry. It's probably more than 50 years old, as you can see, it's kind of coming out. Mm -hmm. But look at the artwork and gold threads, and there's a lot of gold threads and silver threads in all our fabrics. We have a flower embroidery from the northern part of India, where somebody has embroidered these beautiful flowers. You can see the pencil lines they've drawn. And then they mm -hmm. So I hope, you know, people can gather and do some embroidery or share their talents in different ways. Well, we might be seeing a lot of those around town. Yeah. <laughs> when you go to Diamonds, I'll be sorry. <laughs> yeah. So did you want me to show you a sari? Would that yeah. be of interest? A sari is more than five and a half to six yards of fabric. Uh, this one is a silk sari. Um, And usually it has like a different type of border which drapes over you in front and then it's pleated here and it's I look forward to sharing that experience at mm. some point. Mm. But as you can see it's just one long piece of fabric which goes on and on and on and on. And look at the beautiful blue. Beautiful. <clears throat> and mixing the, these colors, mm -hmm. I was just thinking uh, something, I, I like these colors. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you wouldn't think that this brick orange, just brown would go with blue, but it does. And, uh, hmm. So you go to India to pick up the fabric? Yeah, yeah. I also have women in India doing the final touches. Uh, they kind of work in their home environment, mother's hours. Uh, no pressure, they make a lot of extra money by sewing, but it's good for them. They okay. feel uh, they can send out their kids to school, and if they have two, three hours in the afternoon, I supply the sewing machine, the thread, or the fabrics. So, and then if they feel like sewing other things, they're free to do that as well. So, mm. um, it's a nice uh, environment, I think. Well, is there more that you would like? to bring to our attention? I would love to share the wall. Perfect. Perfect. So Barbara, I just wanted to show you this wall, which, you know, I think is a beautiful piece of history. Uh, when I had to uh, take down the walls to make it fire rated for commercial purposes, mm -hmm. this wall was upstairs and they were going to just cover it up. And a lot of the walls were like this. Every wall was like this. So I had Brian cut out a piece of this wall and I said, let's uh, put it out here. Mm. And uh, actually I should give credit to my husband because he said, hey, let's save the wall. <laughs> right? Good, and, good uh, idea. Yeah, so really? now it's here and uh, it's a show piece, but it also shows people that in late 1700, they didn't have fancy tools. Mm -hmm. So they would use axes, I think, to chop and make the slats and the supporting boards. Wow. And uh, when we go upstairs, I'll show you the, the wall of the 1800s, which also I left a small bit exposed. Uh, I think this part was 17, late 1700s, and this, uh, this part of the building is 1800s. Yeah. And it, uh, okay, well, well, this is great to see. I'm glad you saved it. So Barbara, did you notice this banister? Isn't it beautiful? Really old? I think I feel I can feel the handprints of everybody who went up there. Shall we go upstairs? Sure. Cut out. Uh, actually, I found it in a vintage market, oh. but uh, we made it into. Uh, I love all the. Style. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm very happy with the way it came out. Mm. This was fun. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. I could keep on talking, but. I, I want to come back and, yeah. uh, you know, bring some other people to show when yeah. you're ready to, definitely, you know, do something yeah, with I vendors. welcome everybody to Littleton. If you're a vendor and you're a small business, would like to showcase 
and uh, have the space, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, the website is uh, 20meetinghouse.com. All the details are there as well. It's a work in progress, but everything is work in progress. Right, I right. Think. I mean, it's very new, but as soon as I saw it, I thought, I, you know, probably because of your scarves. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so attached. But, um, you know, I thought people should see mm -hmm. what you're trying to do right yeah. now. Yeah. Good. Well, sounds okay. good. And I appreciate you coming on the show. Yeah, thank and, you. And um, opening this also. So, I'll uh, grab my things. Yeah, thanks, Barbara, once again for showcasing well, the space I, for I, me. I, and uh, hopefully we'll work together again, do some other uh, cultural sharing as well. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, and thank you, and thank you. And I'll be seeing you again, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. Have a good day. Bye. Yes. I want to show you something that came from Madavi's shop. Oh, first of all, I want to say that what a neat idea to have that business there and be able to just, you know, I was just thinking in my head of some organizations in town like, um, say, the Loving Stitches group yeah. wanted to take their wares and, you know, they wait once a year at the Holiday Bazaar to kind of sell their stuff. But say in July they wanted to have a sale too. Right. They could rent out the place for the day and advertise and people could come and they could have their own little shop yeah. right there. I think it's the wonderful. It she has a lot of ideas going. Yeah. She said it is going to take her maybe a month to get it all together. Oh, I'm sure. But, but, but it's going to catch on. That's fast. Yeah. Yeah. And beautiful job with the place. It is. And that's, that's nice, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Of course, you know my favorite thing. His scarves, right? Oh, I thought you were going to say Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scarves are good too. <laughs> <laughs> look at that one. Lovely. Yep. Yep. So people should go look at what she has. Yeah, definitely. I think this month's Littleton history segment focuses on a big piece of metal. I'm talking about the fountain located in front of CK Bikes at the old depot in Littleton. The fountain was recently renovated by Dave Erickson and it looks awesome. The history of the fountain was that in 1912, the gift of a drinking fountain was given from the Littleton Grange, number 188, to the town of Littleton. Pipes for town water had just been laid, and the Littleton Water Department was less than one year old. The gift, fabricated by the Concord Foundry Company of Concord, New Hampshire, was installed in front of J.P. Thatcher's store in the bustling depot area. The fountain, priced at $160 in an early 20th century catalog, has graced that spot for 110 years. The Concord Foundry Company began life as the H.W. Clapp Company, who began making cast iron horse troughs. In 1890, Henry Clapp, no longer associated with the company that bore his name, he applied for a patent for a combination trough and drinking fountain. The patent read, in part, the object of the invention is to provide an ornamental drinking fountain adapted for the accommodation of man and beast. The Grange Fountain is an example of a model fountain number one arranged for people, horses, and dogs. The drinking fountain is shielded by a hood to protect humans from bumping heads with horses as they drink from their respective sides. 
A bowl at the base satisfies our smaller four-legged friends. An extended mast with an electric gooseneck lamp is missing from our fountain, uh, but it is visible in the historic photo. The November 2nd, 1912 Turner's Public Spirit reported that the drinking fountain presented by the Grange has been set up in a convenient place near J.P. Thatcher's store and there will be a light over it. A metal plate affixed inside the drinking hood proclaims, presented by Littleton Grange, number 188, to the town of Littleton, Mass., 1912. When I was a kid in the 1970s, I used to walk or ride my bike to Johnson's store. I would always stop and get a drink at the fountain. I remember the water was ice cold. The fountain at that time was already starting to show its age. And over the years since, the fountain kind of fell into disarray. The light that was once on the top was broken off, the fountain was rusty, and eventually the water was shut off. The Littleton Country Gardeners turned it into a planter for flowers and it became more or less a giant flower pot. But in 2019, the Historical Society received an inquiry from Mr. Larry Sullivan of the Warner, New Hampshire Historical Society. They had a fountain in front of their town hall that was in need of restoration. And in the course of their project, Mr. Sullivan began to research the Clap and Concord foundry fountains in New England. And through the wonders of the internet, his research brought him to Littleton, and our fountain is included in his final report. In all, he found 24 fountains in various states of repair and uses. Well, part of Mr. Sullivan's report was a condition assessment based on his personal observation and comparison to others that he had seen. The assessment was an eye-opener for the Littleton Historical Society. And after reading the report, they looked at the fountain with a critical eye. Shortly after receipt of the report, Littleton Historical Society board member Ann Lawrence, a resident of the depot area, met up with Dave Erickson of Erickson's Antique Stoves, Inc., housed in the old depot building. And she mentioned what they had been told by Mr. Sullivan in his report. And Mr. Erickson was immediately captivated by the idea of restoring the fountain. His vision was not just to rehab the structure, but to restore it with, with its original functions of lighting and water. Well, plans were in motion, and at the October 2020 town meeting, funds were allocated from the community preservation funds to make the project a reality. The restoration took two years, but today the fountain looks as good as new. Not only does it add character and beauty to the depot area, but it offers refreshment to both man and beast as well. If you have a chance, stop by and have a drink. Well, thanks to Carolyn Mueller, too, for providing the information for this month's Littleton History segment. That's really a great story. Isn't it a cool story? Yeah, I uh, didn't know all that. Yeah. I have to go by now and look at it, too. It, you can, and as you can see from this segment, um, all the old pictures, what's changed all around that area, but that thing has been in the same spot, which is kind of cool. 110 years. Yeah. So happy birthday, Fountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little older than Millie. <laughs> yeah, but not as old as Hazel Plummer. She probably helped put it up. Oh, probably. Well, she wasn't in Littleton then, but <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we have some interesting interviews coming up through the next months. Mark and I want to make sure you are getting the most information from our show. If you have someone or something you feel would be of interest for our viewers, please call or email Mark at 978-540-2488 or mcrory at littletonma.org. The Garden Club has begun their arrangements for the Holiday Bazaar and continuing to please the customers. These sales help the Garden Club to continue their mission, which is stimulating the interest and knowledge and love of all phases of gardening, aiding in the protection and conservation of our natural resources, to promote civic beauty in our town, encourage the study of horticulture, and to entice the next generation of gardeners. Littleton Country Gardeners is a member of National Garden Clubs Incorporated and Garden Club Federation of Massachusetts. 
If you are new to Littleton, know that we welcome men and women to join. You know, my Mark, my grandson, has become interested in plants. Oh. And so he wants to grow herbs. So I'll have to talk to him about joining. Sure. That would be great. Well, the Littleton Parks Recreation and Community Education Department always has fun stuff for you to enjoy. Brent and John are here to highlight some activities for you. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Mark. Hey. Hi, I'm Brent. And I'm Kaz, and this is Park and Rec Highlights for the month of October. Hey, you know, over here at Littleton Parks and Recreation, we got a lot going on in the month of October. Uh, our next big event is Trunk or Treat. This is a really exciting event. Uh, we have vendors come out. They give away candy. We want everybody to bring their, uh, wear their costumes. Uh, and we're going to follow that with a movie on Alumni Field. It's actually going to be um, on Jet Field, the softball field right next to um, the uh, alumni football field. So that is Friday, October 28th at 6 p.m. Uh, sorry. Yeah, October 28th at 6 p.m. over there at Russell Street School. Uh, one of the things that I started here, uh, I give kudos to a mom here in Littleton that he came up with the idea, but we have the half day program. I know that uh, a lot of uh, parents uh, have a hard time struggling to find coverage for their kids if they're not in Tiger's Den or at your, the club. Uh, they're looking for something. Uh, this is specifically for the Shaker Lane school kids, K through two. But we have uh, an after school program where we have instructors come in. So this last Wednesday, we had Skyhawk Sports take the kids outside and do uh, a, a you know assortment of athletic games with them. Um, what we do is, uh, myself and Kelsey, one of our staff members, we have lunch with the kids and then we hand them off the instructor. The very, very next one we have is Friday, October 21st, and that is Kid Casso. And then we have Wednesday, November 2nd is Top Secret Science. Um, and then we have, you know, pretty much every single day that there's a half day, with the exception of the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and uh, the last day of school, we offer some sort of program. It's $50, there's K through two, um, and we do something for fall, winter, and spring. Yeah. We also have a half day program for uh, grades three through seven. Uh, some people may be a little confused because originally we had the program just for our after school program, the club. That program has now been opened up to all three through seventh graders uh, from RSS or LMS. Uh, the program's great. Most days we go on a field trip. Our next upcoming field trip is going to be October 21st for that half day of school. And we're headed out to Salem, Mass. to take part in all the Halloween festivities. Perfect timing, right before Halloween. And it uh, should be pretty cool to yeah. go out to Salem with that group. Yeah, it's great. And it's just like that Shaker Lane one. It's only 50 bucks for the day. So it's a pretty good deal. Fantastic. Uh, kids' favorite thing. Anybody know? You know? What's kids' favorite thing? Kids' test kitchen. Kids' test kitchen. Food. Yeah. This is a great opportunity to introduce your children to healthy eating. They also get to learn how to make it and have a great time with their instructors. Um, our next six week session is starting up on October 6th. Um, it's a very popular program. It's for grades one through five, and it's $200 for the six week session. Uh, they actually bring home a, a meal every time they're there, uh, or the raw ingredients to cook their own meal to show their parents how to do it too. It's great. It takes yeah. care of dinner for you, right? It there does. As it's well. been a great program. And this starts uh, again October 6th, and it goes from. Um, 5 to 6 p.m. right here at Town Hall Senior Diner. Yeah, this next one here is uh, instructor has been with us a long time, Steph Beach. She teaches a magic workshop. Uh, right now we got two kiddos signed up for this next um, session starting October 4th. It's right after school at Russell Street at 245. It's for Russell Street uh, students, grades three through five. It's only $175. They get, um, I think they get eight actually take home um, magic tricks that they can actually bring home and show their friends and whatnot. Uh, Steph's done an amazing job over the years. Uh, like I said, we already got two kids signed up for this next session. We're looking for a few more. Uh, if you want to get in there, get in there soon, because again, it's starting December 4th. Oh, so my youngest did that program with Steph. Absolutely loved it. The end of the last class is always a show. The kids get to uh, perform their magic in front of all the parents. It's a really fun program if your, your child just like dabbles in the magic or is just mildly interested, because it's, there, there are things that are easy for everybody. Yeah, that's great. Um, one of the things we also brought to uh, Parks and Recreation when I joined was uh, we have a few holidays in town that not everybody gets off for work. Um, in October, we have Yom Kippur, which is Wednesday, October 5th. And on Monday, October 24th is Diwali. It's a new Littleton public school holiday. Um, but, you know, our answer at Park and Rec is if you need us, we're here for you. So. Um, you know, parents don't know what to do with their kids when they're working on that day. Well, we have a couple of field trip programs 
on the 5th of uh, Wednesday next week, we'll be going to Connor's Farm. Um, corn maze, everybody gets apple cider donut. There's a big giant playground. There's an inflatable park area. Um, and there's slides and all sorts of other great things to do there. Uh, and on uh, the 24th, uh, we got Diwali. We got Ultimate Obstacles in Worcester we're heading to. Um, and that is a Ninja Warrior course. So if you take the Ninja Warrior class uh, with probably Brent's group, this stuff. you can go right over here and show everybody what you're made out of. So uh, we wanted to save, uh, in my opinion, the best for last. It's, uh, it's our big program that we've, uh, we started last year. It was pretty small. This year, it's really grown tremendously. We got a great staff in there. They're doing an amazing job. Uh, it's our The Club After School program. Um, a little bit about after school programs. Studies have shown that uh, graduations go up, uh, lower depression rates. Uh, it gives them a feeling of belonging, somewhere they are a part of. And that's what really what we're trying to strive there is give these, place a pl uh, give these kids a place that they can come call their own. Uh, and I think that's what, exactly what they're doing. It's been a great start to the year, uh, but we do have open spots. Uh, if you're interested in getting your kid in, uh, please contact me ASAP. We're enrolling kids every single day. Uh, some people may have a hard time on the website because it's a membership, not a program, and it may not be completely apparent where to sign up. Uh, but if you just give the office a call, we'll take care of you and we'll get you right in there. It's a great program. I can't speak highly of it. Yeah, that's all we have for you for Littleton Parks and Rec for the month of October. Hope to see you back in November. Thanks, guys. Well, it's time to get to this month's trivia question and give the answer and winner of last month's question. First last month's trivia answer to the question, what college did Littleton head football coach Asante Easter attend? The answer was Fitchburg State, my alma mater. We had no correct answers to the trivia questions, so the prize is still up for grabs. And what is the prize? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's $50 cash. That's right, 50 buckaroonies. <laughs> we want to thank Cheryl Cowley Hollinger from Cowley Associates in Littleton for donating the, cra the, the crash, the cash prize. All right, so this month's question is, in what New Hampshire city was the depot fountain fabricated in? So if you remember my little segment on that, you'll uh, find the answer in there. If you think you know the answer, email me your answer at mcrory at littletonma.org and put Littleton Common Trivia in the subject line. Be sure to include a contact phone number so that we can let you know if you won. If there are multiple correct answers, we will put all the winning entries into a bowl and we'll draw out a winner on the next show. And that's how it works. We're dying to give away stuff. So, you know, we thought, uh, you know, I was wondering perhaps maybe because I used to say the first five entries that I received and if someone watched the show later in the month, they may think, oh, I probably missed that opportunity. So now it doesn't matter whether it's the beginning of the month, a little later in the month. If you're seeing this show, you have a chance. Good. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, October. You're going to be leaving us again. For just a week or 10 days. Nice. Uh, to go to my favorite place. Kimball's? <laughs> Second favorite. Oh, second favorite. Um, yeah, Italy. Nice, Italy. And I'm yes. not taking you this time. I know, I'm so sad. <laughs> Sorrento, here you come. Exactly. Probably find some scarves. That's right. You have at least one new one to wear. They're going to say, where did you get that? Yeah. Yep. Littleton Mass. That's right. Only in Littleton Mass. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess that'll do it for our show. What do you want to say to our seniors out there and anyone else watching? Well, I want to say, please, don't forget your seniors. And now, maybe you can hug them. Right. Like we used to. That's right. Go up and hug them. Don't cough on them or sneeze. Hold your breath. Hug them, then separate yeah. again. Right. Can I mention something else? Sure, go ahead, mention it. I want to talk about the fact that I've been embarrassed because right now I have two places that are getting... Uh, you, you know, new crowns in my mouth. And um, what is there now is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I try not to show that part because they're big and they're so white compared to my bottom teeth. But it'll be fixed in October, I hope. Yeah. And I'll be ready to 
well, smile bigger in November. Often you've exposed yourself on the show many times about, you know, hair loss and, you know, weight cancer. thing and cancer and all sorts of stuff. So I just thought it was another chance for Barbara to expose herself. Well, what I'm laughing about is when you started just now, when you said, and you're always ready to expose yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I thought, he's well, going to go on, right? It's, it's sweeps week. You know? <laughs> what can I say? Yes, um, that can have two meanings. Look it up in the dictionary. So. Well, anyway. Yes. Glad yeah. to... Glad to have fun with you, yeah. and uh, have a safe I'll trip. send you a postcard. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> we'll see you next month, folks. Have a great October.